Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a sword visualizer in STL. Now, this is a fairly simple program, so what I'm doing here is essentially I'm just going to tell you right off the bat how this works. You have to take the state of your sword in every iteration and just visualize it. And if that's not clear now, I'm going to just go into the code and show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so let's begin by including a couple of uh, libraries. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need to create a random number generator to give us random numbers to store in some container. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to generate numbers from 1 to 99. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to have numbers that are going to be either 1 or 99. And depending on which value they get, when we visualize them, they're going to be that tall on the screen. So for example, the value 99 will be 99 pixels on the screen while a value that's one will be one pixel on the screen. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna populate our vector V with a bunch of random numbers. So next we're gonna write out our sort algorithm. Now we're going to check if the element at position J is greater than the element at position I. And if it is, we're going to swap them. Okay, now that we have that, let's uh, compile it and see what we got. Okay, well that compiles. Let's actually print this out and see what we got. Okay, that looks sort of, let's just uh, check it with an algorithm. Okay, so it looks like that worked. Next up, what we want to do is we want to actually create a window in renderer so that in STL we'll be able to actually display the state of the sort. So for example, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the i, we're going to take the j, uh, then we're going to take this uh, vector and we're going to visualize the vector. So we're going to display all of the elements in the vector, then we're going to take i and j and we're going to color i and j. We're going to color this position. We're going to color this position a different color. So uh, to do that, let's actually create a window in renderer. Okay, now that we have that, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, try to visualize the state down here. So we're going to try to see what is the state inside of this algorithm at every step. And to, to do that, we're going to define a new function, and I'm going to call this draw state. Okay, so the first thing this uh, function is going to take is going to be a vector. Then it's going to take the renderer. And this is going to be a pointer. Then it's going to take the value of i and the value of j. So we're just going to pass them in. And uh, I'm going to call this red, and I'm going to and I'm going to call the other one blue. So just to recap as to what I'm doing here. So what we are doing is we're getting the vector. So this vector is a collection that we're actually sorting. And I'm going to be interested in 
the state of this vector for every iteration of the loop. So, so every time the loop changes this vector, I want to know the state of it. So that's why I'm getting the V. I'm getting a vector because I want to know the state of the vector every time we update in the loop. And we're passing in a renderer simply because we need to use the visualization functions. Now, the red and blue variables, what these are going to be, are going to be, uh, let me just scroll down here. So I and J, I'm going to pass I and J as either red or blue, and I'm going to color them red or blue, uh, just so you know which part of the uh, container is being sorted at that point. Okay, so if that makes sense, let's continue. So what we're going to do now is going to draw every single element in V. And what we're going to do is going to say, okay, so if some element is uh, a value of, let's say, 10, it's going to be 10 pixels on the screen. If the value is, let's say, uh, 54, it's going to be 54 pixels on the screen. And to do that, we are just going to loop over V. And we're going to do SDL, render, draw color. And we're going to set this to 255, 255. And make sure you pass in the render. Okay. And uh, finally, I'm going to draw a line. So I'm going to say SDL, render, draw line pass in a render, uh, then actually I forgot to do this, but we need an index. So what we're going to do is going to say um, int index is equal to zero. And then at the end of this loop, we're going to increment the index by one. Okay, so pretty much what we're doing is we are assigning the x, the x coordinate on this line to be just the index. So as it moves from left to right, it's gonna increment by one and we're basically gonna draw a line at that index. Okay, so that's your, pretty much the line. Uh, what we're doing is we are getting an index. We're setting the index to zero. Uh, then we're gonna draw this line beginning at this index. And after we finish, we're gonna increment the index by one. So it's gonna move uh, left. It's gonna, or should I say, it's gonna move right uh, after every iteration and draw another line. And this line is gonna be from 99 to I. So depending on the value of I, that's how tall this line is gonna be. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now let's actually use this function. So right, actually, no, not in here. Let's do it here. So we're going to say state, or should I say draw state. Okay, and now we have to pass in our vector. So I'm going to pass in B. Then we have to pass in the renter. And this is going to be I and J. Okay, great. So what we're going to do here is we're going to clear the screen. So what, what we did is I set the draw color to black and then I cleared the screen. So after we do that, we can actually draw the state. So on this line, we're going to draw the state of the sort. Then we're going to show this to the window. And finally, we're going to delay for about 10, 10 milliseconds. Okay, so let's see what we got. Let's compile this. And don't forget to link STL.
Okay, so now we have something that looks like our visualizer, but the problem here is that uh, it's all white, so we're not really sure what's going on. So what we have to do, just to make it clear for you, we're visualizing this uh, vector. So this vector, the, we see the contents of it, uh, this is how it's laid out, or this is the values of the vector itself. Uh, but the problem here is that we don't really see what's going on. We don't really understand what's going on here. So we see that it's like randomly, uh, these things are like randomly getting smaller and then this thing is randomly getting bigger. So if you're a newbie to uh, sorting algorithms and you see this, you're like, well, what's going on here? This makes absolutely no sense. Which is why what we have to do is we have to we have to render that position that's being sorted at that moment. So uh, position red and blue. We have to render uh, these positions a different color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if index is equal to red, then we're going to set the color to be red. And if the index is blue, then we're going to set the color to be blue. And otherwise, we're just going to set the color to be what it was. So we're going to make it white. Okay, so let's uh, compile this again and see what we got. So now we see that we have this uh, red um, index and we have the blue index. And what's happening is uh, this blue index is going from left to right and it's scanning for the value that should be at this position. So th the position on the left hand side. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how this algorithm works. You can uh, pretty much implement the same thing for any algorithm. Uh, you can do this for bubble sword, you can do this for merge sword, uh, you can do this for basically anything. As long as you're able to get the state of the algorithm, this should work for you. Yeah, so that works. Okay, so to recap what we just did, this was about eight lines of code. So pretty much what we did here is we have this uh, draw state function and what we are doing here is we're passing in uh, this vector which contains all of the elements that we're trying to sort. Uh, next we pass in a renderer, this is just to render out what's going on. Uh, we have red and blue. These, um, these are the indexes that we use in our sort. So as you can see here, we're passing in i and j. So i is, which color is i? i is red and we have j which is blue. So pretty much what happens here is we pass in v, the vector, we have a renderer, we have i and j. Uh, basically that's the entire state of this algorithm. So in every iteration of the algorithm, what were we interested in? We are interested in i, j, and what v looks like. So pretty much what we're doing here is we're going, f and we're going for every element in v, and when we get it, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line. So we're going to draw a line. So depending on the value of i, we're going to draw i uh, to be a line. And the size of the i is going to depend on the size or the number. So pretty much what we do is we check if the index is red, then we color the, um, then we color the output as red. Uh, if the index is blue, we color the output as blue. Otherwise, so if it's not red or blue, we're going to just color it white. And finally, we're going to render the line on line 23. Then we're going to increment i by 1. So this, or should I say, we're going to increment the index by 1. Now, the only reason I'm defining an index like this is because um, I'm using a ranged for loop. So, so it doesn't really come with an index. Okay, so going, going into the main function, what we have is we have a random device, rd. Uh, this is just to create a random number. Here we populate the vector. Uh, we just push back a bunch of random numbers. Uh, here's how we create a window and a renderer. So we create a window pointer, a render pointer. We run this create window and renderer function to basically populate this window and renderer for us. 
uh, then we have a sort algorithm. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this sort algorithm, you can implement whatever you want here. So if you want, you could have a sort algorithm that sorts in any way you can imagine. And basically, you can just uh, put this in here. So like as an example, I can just show you. So let's say if I don't want lines and I want points, I can do something like this. I think this will work. Let me check. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm running these points out as, uh, you know, just points on the screen instead of them being lines. So play around with this, do whatever you want, because this is a really simple program. So as I, as I showed you before, this is only about, this is about like 70 lines of code. It's, it's nothing. And it's really interesting the things you can do with this. So, so as you can see, so we made one change and we changed how the visualization works and it went from being uh, lines on the screen to being points. So yeah, again, uh, play around with this. It's uh, pretty fun and I will see you later.